Hello again, welcome back to our series about modular synthesizers and composers interested in modular synthesizers. This is once again sponsored by Film Scoring Tips. Film Scoring Tips is your go-to resource for anything film scoring. You find advice from top industry professionals, reviews, tutorials and much more at filmscoringtips.com. During the last couple of episodes, we explored how you can use your modular synth as an external effects unit. Now it's time to go into the building blocks of modular synthesizers, and specifically, we're going to explore two fundamental concepts, triggers and gates. Before we do so, I just want to point you to one hopefully interesting reading. This is a book that I really love, it's called Patch and Tweak, it's a very well-known book among sound designers and modular synthesizers enthusiasts. It has everything you need to know about modular synthesis, and it has interviews to amazing people like Hans Zimmer and Richard Devine and other modular synths, nerds, uh, enthusiasts, performers and composers. It is not a cheap book and is not available as a digital copy, but I believe it's really worth the money, strongly recommend it. Last time, when we talked about modulation, we already introduced the concept of voltage control, which is this common language that modules use to talk between each other, and it is the way you tell a synth what to do and when to do it. There are several messages that can be carried uh, across modules using CV, and one of them is a gate. You might already be familiar with the concept of gate if you used MIDI before in your life, which if you're a film composer, I'm sure you did. When you press a key on your keyboard, that tells your computer or your synth that the note is on and stays on until you release it. And that opens a gate that stays open until you release the note. It works exactly the same way with modular synthesizers, except they use CV. In fact, there are even modules that specialize in converting MIDI to CV so that you can use a standard MIDI controller to control your modular synthesizer. Your modular synth can take a voltage that is always in the range between minus 12 volts and plus 12 volts. And when we're dealing with gate, we're always talking about positive voltage. So that goes from zero to plus 12 volts. And the module that is expecting a gate to do something, and we'll do a practical example at the modular in a second, is expecting a rising edge that stays open above a certain voltage threshold. A trigger is a very similar concept, steps it doesn't stay open is a raising edge in CV that goes down right away and so it's typically used to trigger drums or to send a clock to a specific module but let's see all this in action at the modular one of the first things that you want to do with your modular synth if you are a film composer is to hook it up to your DAW and to make them talk to each other and be in sync and you do that using a CV signal known as a clock. There are a bunch of ways you can send a clock from say Cubase or Logic or whatever you're using to your modular. One of them is using something like this, an ES9, which I already told you about in my previous video, which is a, essentially a USB interface which can also act as a CV interface. But it's a very expensive module, this is around 600 pounds, and you don't need any of that to get started. What I would do is to use something like this, which is my Arturia Keystep Pro, and there is a Keystep version, so without the Pro, which is very simple and very cheap, and it work just as well to do what uh, we're about to do, which is a USB device, so you can send the MIDI clock from your DAW into it and then it has a clock out which you'll be able to send to your modular synth. Right now I'm using, I'm sending the clock to this multiple. A multiple in modular synthesizers is something that allows you to send the signal in and you get three or more outputs of the same uh, signal, in this case a clock. There are also cheaper alternatives to a multiple, not that a multiple is expensive at all, Passive multiples are like 20 bucks or something like that. And one of those alternatives is using what is known as a ninja star, uh, which is allows you to send a signal in and you'll get five copies out. I now put a metronome on my um, DAW, which is Cubase today, and I sent a clock to my Arturia Keystep Pro. So now when I have Cubase start, you should see these sequencer move, let's see. So you see that we are receiving clock. 
because it's moving together with Cubase. And one of the very first things that I want to show you is that if I take a cable, remember that my convention is that red is for CV and white cables are for audio. If I get, grab this signal and send it to my trusty Mordax data, and now if I press play, I should get a clock signal. And you see that is going in time uh, with, my, uh, with my DAW. And these are triggers. Now let's explore what a gate is instead. So let me get rid of this and let's get rid of the metronome running as well. Now I am still using my Keystep Pro, but instead I'm sending a gate out and I'm hooking it up again to the Mordax data. So now there's nothing going on, but as soon as I press a key, you see that gate open. And it's still open because I still have my finger on the key. As soon as I release it, the gate goes down. Okay, now you'd be justified for thinking that it's all very boring, so let's get into some patching. One of the main or most basic uses for a trigger is to simply trigger drums. So you send a trigger signal to a drum module and you're telling it, this is a hit, do your thing, essentially. And to do that, you don't even need a sequencer. All you need is a clock out, which I have from my Arturia Keystep Pro. And if you remember it, I'm sending it to these multiples, so I have multiple copies of that clock that I can send over to my synth. So, if I now go from this clock out into the kick, trigger input of my kick drum, which is a 2HP kick, and I send the audio out into my mixer, and then I press play on Cubase, I have a kick drum every quarter note. If I turn the metronome on, we can make sure that they are in sync, and they are. You might hear a tiny bit of a lag, and this is just because I'm recording the screen in the same time. So now this is cool for the kick drum, but obviously I might want faster tempos for uh, say my hi-hats and uh, slower tempos for say my snare drum, because maybe I want to hit my snare drum every two hits. Uh, so you got, uh, you know, the kick drum every quarter and the snare drum on the two and four. And maybe the hi-hats uh, every 16 notes. So let's do that. Uh, to do that, I can use something called a clock divider. And this is a very inexpensive way to get your drums going without investing in a sequencer like the circadian rhythm uh, that they have over here, which is very expensive. Instead, we're going to use a Dupfer A162 which is a very interesting and very inexpensive clock divider. What a clock divider does essentially is that it gets a clock signal and it splits it into subdivisions. So if you fit it, a um, quarter note is basically splits it into half notes and there are also different divisions like prime numbers and other uh, multiples. You can have a look at the panel and you'll understand uh, what this does. And if I'm starting out with a quarter per pulse, it's kind of slow uh, because I might want something faster. So I'm going to now change the clock rate on my Arturia key step, and then gonna put a pulse every eight note. So now if I press play, I should have two kick drums every quarter. And that's true and it's cool. So to achieve the same thing, I can go with the clock out into my clock input of my Duffer 162, and then uh, you can decide whether it's going to send gates or triggers. Doesn't really matter for drums for this specific case, but let's send triggers for now, and I'll show you a use case for triggers uh, in a minute. And if I press play, now, this first output, it's sending my, um, my original signal divided in two. So now I'm getting exactly the same. So I'm having uh, a trigger every quarter note because here is sending eight divided by two, it's four. So if I use send now this trigger out 
into back into my kick drum and then I send my kick drum audio out back into my mixer. I have the same thing as before. So this is now going to allow me to use the other output, which is a trigger every four beat to a snare, which I have over here. This is a also another 2HP module, which are very nice and inexpensive little modules, the 2HP snare. And I'm going to send the audio out of the snare into another channel of my mixer. And now I have a very basic kick as snare pattern, thanks to a clock divider. Now, if I wanted to send triggers to my hi-hat, and by the way, I don't have a proper hi-hat module, so we're going to use this Akemi's Tycho, which is actually an FM synthesizer, and we're gonna do something that is going to resemble some hi-hats. Now, I can't divide my clock any further because I'm only going slower. So, how about we get this clock and we send it instead to a clock multiplier? I'm using now noise engineering fractio solum, which is a clock multiplier. And here I have two numbers. Uh, down I have the incoming clocks and uh, up I have the uh, what is uh, what is spitting out. So essentially here is giving me for every pulse I'm going to send two out. But if I go back to one one, it's acting as a simple clock multiplier because it's also giving me the original signal divided by two and multiplied by two. So I'm going to get a copy of the same signal and bring it back into my clock divider. So I have exactly the same thing as before, but I'm getting the multiplied by two version of this clock signal and I'm gonna send it to my Akemis Tycho trigger input and then I need an audio out back into another channel of my mixer. So let's dial something that is going to re resemble some snares. And this is the cool thing about modular synths. They essentially, you can use whatever you want and shape it into something else. This is a synth that we're shaping as, it's still a percussive kind of synth, but we're shaping it as hi-hats by adding some sort of noise. So now I have a very basic drum pattern and here I'm using just a clock source, which I'm splitting and multiplying through a Duffer A162 clock divider and a noise engineering fractio solemn used as a noise, uh, as a clock multiplier. So this is like a very basic drum patterns. And now you might want to get some variation into this using some logic and modulating the parameters, but it's just to show you how to use triggers. Okay, let's talk about gates now. Uh, one of the things that the Keystep Pro can do is to uh, also uh, be a sequencer. So I'm able to send gates and pitch uh, CV. So here I have the gate out of my voice for in the Keystep Pro back into this multiple again, but I'm only using this multiple as an extension cable at the moment because it doesn't reach it. And let's use my Moog Mother 32, which is a great semi modular synth, which is essentially a full synth voice. Can have basically all the basic of subtractive analog synthesis here. And if I'm gonna send the uh, gate out of my key step into the gate in of my Moog Mother 32. And then I'm gonna send obviously the audio out into my mixer. Now, if I press a key, I should get a sound. And likely I do. And now you'll notice that whatever is the key that I press, I'm always getting the same pitch. And this is because I'm sending to this module only my gate information. So I'm only set telling this module, this is note on, note off. I'm not telling it which pitch to play. For that, I also need to send it pitch CV, which we'll do in another video. Although I can obviously change the frequency here. My God, this thing sounds fat. I love it. Uh, the beauty of the analog sounds. And now I can also sequence it. Uh, maybe I can, you know, put some random steps here. I don't know what I'm doing. 
whatever. And now if I press play on Cubase, I should have this uh, sequence playing time. I can change the gate, the length of the, it's the gate length of each uh, step. So I can do something like this, and I can obviously shape the attack and decay a little bit. Okay, so this is not particularly interesting, and we like to modulate it a little bit. In my previous video, I showed you how to use an LFO to modulate a parameter, but gate doesn't need to mean simply not on, not off. If you think about it, and this is the beauty of um, modular synthesizers, is that CV is CV. Uh, the modular doesn't know that you want to send a note on or a note off. So if I send a gate out to whatever parameter here, rather than having a smooth uh, change in CV, I'm getting a on-off, on-off um, kind of message for whatever is the length that I'm going to send. So you remember that my clock divider A162, the Duffer one, has a trigger gate switch. So if I switch it to gate, and I send back that same version of the clock into the clock input and run the sequence. Now I have all these clock subdivisions that I can use for something. So how about we send the gate to open the cutoff of my mother 32? Let's send the first division of it. So I'm sending quarter notes into the filter cutoff input of the Mother 32. So now I'm rhythmically opening the cutoff of the MOOC, which already started to sound quite interesting. And how about we do it every quarter? And then the cool thing about the, this clock divider is that I can change the subdivision. So I can have prime numbers or other multiples. So again, now it's really starting to get quite interesting. Getting the resonance up a little bit. And maybe I can use one of the subdivisions to get the cutoff up. And then here, in the, uh, in the Mother 32, I can get some noise in. Rather than having it smoothly in and out, as you would do with an LFO, how about we make it rhythmical using a clock divider? So I'm gonna go from the output here into the mix CV input here. That is already pretty cool. And this is like basically opening and closing the whole thing. If I send these into a VCA, just like with the uh, LFO in my previous video, I can decide how much of it goes into it because I'm deciding the amplitude of that gate. So these already started to sound quite cool. Let's get some effect in, effects into place. How about we distort the signal with a distortion, which I have here is one of the algorithms of my Timizoara. This is a Chaos Devices Timizoara. And I send it as an input here, and then we get the output back into my mixer. This is a stereo module, so you should have a stereo signal now, although it doesn't change much in the stereo field. And now I have all the signal dry, and this is my sig distorted signal. So how about we send the gate out with yet another subdivision into the dry wet input of my Timizoara. Now again, it's changing rhythmically, deciding when is distorting and when not. Let's try another algorithm in my Dimizuara. This is like a fuzz with some dynamic response. Oh, now it's really cool and nasty. And maybe we can use even another division to change the resonance of my filter.
and that's really cool. And now, for example, I could send my clock out into my multiplier and get a multiplied out, for example. And so now it's all much faster. I think I should attenuate some resonance as well so it doesn't get just as squelchy. So again, that gate into a VCA and back into the resonance input of the mother. Let's try some different, some different algorithms in the Timizoara. <laughs> this is crazy. Or maybe I can use some reverb. So now I'm rhythmically sending reverb, which is quite an interesting effect. <laughs> quite different. I really hope this was fun for you to watch and that inspired you to go and try some of this stuff uh, yourself. As you can see, in modular synthesizers there are a lot of alternative ways to achieve the same end result. So don't worry if you don't have exactly uh, the same modules that I, uh, that I have. Chances are you have something that can do something like that and you can find your own way of doing that. This is the beauty of modular synthesizers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.